You're watching BTF. Share and subscribe. Hey guys, welcome to Entertainment Talk Nation. This is Rob. This video, we're going to do a Godzilla versus Kong topic, and it is why Kong can beat Godzilla. And before we get into this topic, first of all, I know this is a very late video. By the time you guys are watching this, it'll probably be like 1130. But for those of you who were on stream last week, you guys remember today was that big interview I had. So it kind of shifted my whole day back. So, uh, but I wanted to at least get this video out, but I can assure you the next two days, there's going to be a ton of videos on the channel, probably, probably like 12 videos in the next two days. Cause I got some King of the monster videos that I want to finally complete so we can move on and concentrate on Godzilla versus Kong. Plus we have other top five videos coming tomorrow. One of them is going to be uh, Godzilla King of the monsters top five. Then of course, Thursday, we got the fringe entertainment. And um, and there's a lot of other stuff that I didn't get to talk about this week, entertainment related. There wasn't a whole lot of big news, but as you guys know, like Thor 4 got confirmed. And I have people asking me how I feel about the whole Bond thing. But in terms of all the entertainment topics, we're going to get into that during Thursday night stream. So that'll be 9 p.m. as you guys know. Thursday's Friday, Saturday, 9 p.m. So why Kong can beat Godzilla? Well, I think if you're in... A big kaiju fan, you obviously know the answer to this. I mean, when you look at Kong versus Godzilla, obviously Godzilla has the advantage in terms of his projectile weapon, his his breath, his sheer size, his brute force, his strength, where Kong would have to basically rely on his speed, agility, uh, his smarts. So there are many reasons why Kong can beat Godzilla, even though I know there's a lot of us out there who want Godzilla to win. They want that definitive victory. And I got to be honest, as I've said many times, don't be surprised if Kong ekes out a victory, especially what we've been hearing so far in terms of him being set up as the underdog. And some of the production team, and particularly even Mike Doherty, mentioned that there are certain elements about Kong that give him an actual advantage over Godzilla. So... But what is it within the match that could actually have Kong win? Well, I think it's safe to say, or we can at least right now assume, until we get more details, that Kong is not going to have his electric powers. Uh, I don't see that happening. I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense. We got no indication that he had these powers when he was young, and I can't see a reason why it would just suddenly pop up as he gets older, uh, without good reason. Uh, now, I'm not saying that that's not going to happen in the movie. They could always, you know, go the Toho way and decide to give Kong these powers. But uh, I would think they'd have to come up with a pretty good explanation as to why he has them. But the truth of it is, is that he really doesn't need them. I mean, Kong's biggest focus is to avoid Godzilla's atomic breath. And considering Kong's speed, uh, that theoretically should not be too hard to do. I mean, Godzilla pretty much telegraphs that uh, atomic breath. And I think without actually pinning down Kong or holding him in like a, such a bear hug, which I don't even think Godzilla could do with the small arms, uh, if it's in the open field, uh, Kong's probably not going to get hit with that atomic breath. I'm sure they'll figure something out in the movie to make it possible or to make it happen. Uh, so, And I'm sure they'll find a creative way to make it so that Kong does get hit with it. But theoretically, when you look at the speed, when we're talking our fictional monsters and how they tend to fight, uh, theoretically, Kong should not get hit with atomic breath in the open field. It's just not possible, especially with this iteration of Godzilla, who really telegraphs his atomic breath. I mean, it's a buildup up his back. Um, you could argue that there's a shot that, uh, that Kong could get hit with it because he doesn't know it's coming. You know, maybe for the first time he's seeing it, he doesn't know what Godzilla's doing. He's just kind of standing there wondering, and then Godzilla blindsides him with the shot. So you could argue that that's possible as well. And maybe that is the, the way he gets hit with it for the first time, and then from there he kind of knows how it's coming now. So, But also the speed and the agility as well as the strength. You know, Kong is very strong. I mean, he is obviously a kaiju-sized ape, and apes have a lot of power. I mean, we talk about his speed and his agility, but combine that with raw strength. And you're talking about a ground and pound hit and run tactics that, uh, you know, could eventually wear down Godzilla. Now, Godzilla is very durable. 
you know, he's been through wars, he's been through battles, he's taken some heavy hits. So it'll take time for Kong to wear him down. I guess the question is, who has the more stamina? You know, does Kong have enough stamina to go in there and continually hit and run and wear him down? Or can Godzilla outlast him in the stamina department? And I think that's the most interesting question. Uh, because I think you can make an argument that both of them have pretty substantial stamina. But I think... In terms of why he can beat Godzilla, I think the speed factor is a big deal. Godzilla is very lumbering. He's very slow. And when you combine that speed with the raw strength that he has, uh, I do think that a couple of significant blows to Godzilla's head, his nose, uh, you know, if he does, you know, there's always been, the even in my little story, I theorize, I theorize there that he could rip off a dorsal plate. We don't know how kind of, what kind of effect that would have a Godzilla, at least this iteration. Um... Yeah, there's plenty of opportunity for him to beat him, even uh, setting him up. You know, we saw in the original Godzilla vs. Kong, there were times where he'd hide and he'd put himself in a position where he'd gain an advantage over Godzilla. I'm sure they're going to exercise some of those smarts in this movie. Um, so I think there's plenty of reasons why he can beat him. I think the strength and the speed are a factor. The agility is a factor. Aerial tactics are another thing. If we're going to be on Skull Island, which it looks like we are based on the end of Godzilla King of the Monsters, then, yeah, you're talking about home field advantage. You're talking about areas where Kong can lure Godzilla and start swinging around and just kicking the shit out of him. So there's definitely reasons why he could beat Kong. I guess, you know, it's not something that, that we, you know, it's something we could always theorize, but at the end of the day, it's really up to the creators, you know, whether, you know, how they want to make one monster look against the other and uh, who they want coming out on top. But Kong definitely has the assets to beat Godzilla. There's no denying that. You know, even if you're a Godzilla fan, if you're, you know, if, if you're being objective at least, if you're at least trying to look at things down the middle and not be too biased, you know, I mean, I'm a huge Godzilla fan. I want him to win in the movie. But I recognize that, you know, Kong in his kaiju form, let's say, because, you know, this is based on, as far as we know, at least I'm guessing, somewhat based on Toho's iteration of Kong from the 60s when you have these two monsters clashing, because Godzilla facing traditional Kong would be pretty much one-sided, as traditional Kong is only about 25 feet tall. But this Kong obviously is kaiju size. He's the kaiju version. And I think that he can definitely pack a punch that's, that could, could lay out Godzilla. And I don't think it should be underestimated. Um, I know there's still a lot of people thinking to themselves, well, you know, you look at Godzilla and how he fought Ghidorah in Godzilla King of the Monsters... But you got to remember, I mean, he was supercharged at the end. He was charged with Mothra's powers. He was supercharged by a nuke. Uh, these, are, these are assets that he's not going to have access to in this movie. There's not going to be a nuke that's going to be set off in his face. Uh, there's not going to be a Mothra there to supercharge him. It's going to be basically vanilla Godzilla. <laughs> ah, I like that. Vanilla Godzilla with his atomic breath versus Kong. And we don't even know if it's vanilla Kong because we don't know... What has happened to Kong in all these years since Skull Island? We don't know just how big he's gotten. We don't know if he has obtained some sort of powers. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, you know, on the surface, yeah, Godzilla looks like the favorite. And my biggest con my, my concern right now is the fact that they're setting up Kong to be the underdog. Uh, because usually in underdog movies, the underdog tends to win. So and I and I've said before it would not surprise me if if Kong won. I know the argument counter that is oh well Toho you know there's no telling there's no guarantee that they would let you know uh, Godzilla lose they wouldn't want to do that well that may be true that may be something that they set out in the open but remember this is money talking and. Toho has made a pretty penny off of the legendary MonsterVerse, and I'm sure a couple of extra million dollars is all they need to kind of convince them to look the other way. Uh, plus, you never know. They might have said, okay, well, if Kong's going to win in America, Godzilla's going to win in Japan. And for all we know, we could be getting another Godzilla vs. Kong movie coming out in Japan in a couple of years. So we really don't know. That's the truth of it. What I do know is it looks like we'll get a definitive winner. And I think right now, uh, I'm in the back of my head, I tell myself, wouldn't surprise me if Kong won, but obviously I want Godzilla to win. But in terms of why he can beat Godzilla, he can beat Godzilla in many different ways. It just depends on how 
the creators want to highlight those advantages that he does have over Godzilla. And the and speed is a big advantage against someone like Godzilla who's very lumbering. It's just a matter of how much ground and pound can Godzilla take. I, I don't think he's taking the kind of beating uh, that Kong can dish out. You know, I mean, when you think about this monster verse, you know, a lot of his melee fights were against the Muto and, of course, Ghidorah. And Ghidorah doesn't punch or anything. Ghidorah's obviously his power with his gravity beams and things of that nature. Uh, you know, when he fought the Muto, it was brute force against the female. And the male gave him a lot of trouble because the male flew and the male was fast. Uh, but the male was also very dumb. So, you know, I don't see uh, Kong being that dumb. Uh, he's pretty much fighting a monster that mentally is as close to a human as you can be. And that is a huge advantage. So, you know, I'm not taking anything away from Kong. I think Kong is more than capable of beating Godzilla, but I'm obviously rooting for Godzilla. But I'm also saying to the back of my head that don't be surprised if Kong wins. So, uh, but yeah, that's it. That's it for this video. Sorry that it came out so late tonight. I'm sure a lot of you will catch it tomorrow. But uh, like I said, the next two days is going to be a lot of videos because I have a lot of videos that I want to finally complete and get done, especially in the Godzilla category, so we can focus on Godzilla vs. Kong. I got the uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters top five. I got the my final thoughts on Godzilla King of the Monsters, as well as I'm going to add to that talking about the Blu-ray release date that came out today. We'll get into that tomorrow as well. And I have to finish the Hindsight series. I still got to cover Godzilla in Hindsight, Mothra in Hindsight, and the Titans in Hindsight. So that's pretty much like six videos to finish off Godzilla King of the Monsters once and for all and then move on from there. And then, of course, we have other things coming up in the next two days than the live stream. So, But anyway, guys, that's it for this video. There's going to be the scary story video coming up later tonight as well. That's already done and recorded. So it's a matter of uploading it. So that'll be, that'll be up shortly after this one. And that's actually a four-part series that I got from a user on Reddit. And the first one is more of... It's not really scary per se. It's more like, you know, just an experience he had that he felt was a little eerie when he thinks back on it. It's a pretty interesting story. And then it gets a little bit, the series, they're not really connected per se, but it's just a, a personal experience that a user had. And he shared four stories that um, on Reddit that happened to him and gets a little creepy and eerie as the stories progress. But I started with part one today and then part two, three, and four will be released during the rest of the week on the channel. So anyway, guys, that's it for this video. If you are new here, please hit the subscribe button and definitely like and share the video. It helps the channel a great deal. And until next video, this is Rob signing off for ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Take it easy. Thank you for watching ETN. Click here to watch more content. Don't forget to leave a comment. Also, make sure you like and share this video. If you want to know when the next video is up, click the notification bell next to the subscribe button. And most of all, make, make sure, sure to, to click, click that, that subscribe button for regular content. content.